Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I thought I'd talk you through all the feed insects I offer my leopard geckos and how much I actually offer them. Now in here at the moment we actually have mealworms. I've actually covered them with this. They're all going to get attached to this now. Um, someone actually pointed out in my giant mealworm video I was complaining that they were all pupating really quickly and then someone said it might be because they haven't, they're not covered with anything the substrate wasn't very deep and that's kind of similar to the mealworms and what i've been doing is getting an egg cart and you know the sort of cardboardy sort of ones and covering them over and although we do have some pupas it has actually slowed them down pupating so that's awesome to see so i will probably start off with mealworms so mealworms are quite common feeder insects easy to find are they the healthiest thing no there are healthier feeder insects and what I would always suggest is to offer a variety of feeder insects if you can. I know it's easiest to just keep one type and keep feeding that, but actually sometimes the geckos will get bored of a food. And just nutritionally, it's good to offer a variety. They would be eating a variety of insects in the wild, so this is probably the best way to go. Now, mealworms... For me, for my adult leopard geckos, I offer 10 to 15 at a time. Now, if you have a baby... If you breed mealworms, you're going to have smaller mealworms to offer. So if, you, if you're starting off and you want to start off by breeding mealworms, that can help a lot with offering a variety of sizes. When all of my geckos were babies, I never offered mealworms because they just... I used to always just mainly feed crickets and the occasional waxworm, uh, but that was obviously quite a few years ago. But um, if you do have a baby and you've offered mealworms let me know below how many you usually offer whether you do offer something this size but just not as many because as I said I don't really have the experience with that so I don't want to say for sure this is what you should do now something I will say is with mealworms you do get them go in this pupa stage and that's totally fine to offer these to your geckos. If anything, they don't have the hard exoskeleton, which is even better. And once again, in the wild, the geckos would probably go for each life stage, you know? Like, they're not going to be like, oh, that's a pupa now, I don't want it. If you see your geckos react to this, you know they are very interested. And same with the beetles. Now, I don't offer beetles all the time at all, if I'm being honest with you. A lot of the time, I keep them to breed them. But occasionally if I'm picking out mealworms and I see the odd beetle, especially with someone like Diego, one of my big male geckos, um, I will offer him a beetle because in the wild, leopard geckos do eat beetles. I don't think this should be like a thing you're offering all the time, more of just a treat, more of just a bit of variety. But yes, you can definitely use every stage of a mealworm's life cycle. Next, we'll look at crickets. Now, unfortunately, I bought crickets from Pets at Home this time round. Um, I was going to order some online, but they were getting really expensive with the postage and everything, and I didn't need anything else with them. So I was like, you know what? It's cheaper. I'll go to Pets at Home. They all died. I have no clue why, because they had fresh food. And now I completely understand when people say to me, why do my crickets keep dying? I keep giving them food. Um, yeah, this happened to me. This is the first time it's happened to me. Usually I order from Internet Reptile. And they, yeah, you're going to get some that die off. But nowhere near as quick as this. It was unbelievable. Um, they just... They just all died. There was The food was still fresh in there. So I don't have any crickets right now to show you. And I haven't added any more recently because you may have noticed when you get into spring and summer, the geckos start to eat a little less. Now, if your gecko is still eating regularly, that's absolutely fine too. You're very lucky. I have four, uh, three girls and one boy. And yeah, this time of the year, they start to eat less and crickets aren't always the most interesting thing for them. So at the moment, I don't have any crickets in. So I will be using some older footage that I have previously filmed with the crickets to talk you through this bit. So with crickets, I aim to feed five to eight. Uh, eight being the best result, five being the minimum, really. Um, I've always done this. This isn't necessarily like a set in stone, this is what you have to do. It's just something I have done over the years. Um, some people will say, offer as much food as your gecko will eat in 15 minutes. 
Now this could be fine for babies, however, you don't want to do this with adults because they can definitely, definitely get overweight. And not to mention other foods like waxworms, there's no way you would leave your gecko for 15 minutes with unlimited waxworms because they would definitely eat them. So what you could do is if you do have a baby, you could try crickets and see how many they eat in 15 minutes, that's fair. Um, with an adult you might have to be a little more uh, strict because they could eat a bit too many. Next we'll talk about waxworms. I did also get these from Pets at Home. These have actually been fine. You get like the odd one that goes kind of like black or crispy. Um, but for the majority of them, they've actually lasted a lot longer. We get like quite a few that end up pupating, but these are doing quite well. So uh, Pets at Home for waxworms, maybe they're not too bad. Now when it comes to waxworms, I only offer a maximum of three every now and again because they're more of a treat. Once again, I do offer the pupa stage as well sometimes. If you see my video on a tip to get your gecko to eat when they're refusing to eat, there's a very good tip in there to do with pupas, so I'd recommend checking that out if you are struggling. With the moths, one time I went to get a waxworm out and one a moth was in here, the wax moth, and it flew out into Diego's tank and he leaped and caught it. And in another video, I actually did offer one to Ziggy and she went wild for it. Now, they're quite dusty and once again, I don't think I'd recommend often feeding the wax moth. Drogo my Chihua actually went for one as well. So I think it's one of those things that could be good for the enrichment, definitely gets them moving, um, but not something you would do on the regular. Um, but once again, you can utilize every stage of life in the waxworm life cycle, but they are a treat, so do not give them loads. Unfortunately, I have been in pet shops where they have just put an entire dish full of waxworms, undusted, in their tank and the frustrating thing with this is you might look at the geckos and be like they've got a really thick tail they must be healthy it's most likely they're very unhealthy and overweight and it's due to being fed just wax worms the next thing we're going to talk about are morio worms this is not a morio worm this is a giant mealworm i don't have any morio worms in at the moment so i'll add in some clips here so with morio worms i recommend only feeding about three or four max they're not particularly healthy definitely not a staple diet um they're more of a treat like the wax worms the geckos go wild for them i'm not sure if i'd recommend them for babies because they're very strong and they do have quite a pinch on them if they want to bite um maybe just for your big juveniles and your adults um once again this isn't something i offered my geckos when they were babies they've only actually just recently discovered morio worms Quickly hopping back to these giant mealworms, honestly I haven't really offered my geckos any, like, they had a few at the start when, you know, I did that video and they've had a few since, but they're not the healthiest as I've said in those videos. I can give them a pupa if I want, they can have this. Um, with the beetles, I have read that be due to the hormonal treatment they get, the beetles tend to come out sterile, so they don't often get used for breeding purposes. Maybe they could be used for a cleanup crew because if they can't breed, that'll be quite good because then you don't get mealworms in your enclosure, in your bioactive enclosure. Um, but when I was offering the giant mealworms, I was only giving them about three. Uh, definitely not an insect I would recommend. And finally, another feed insect that I have offered, I occasionally offer, but I don't have any right now, are calci worms, also known as phoenix worms. These are actually incredibly nutritious, so they're very good for your gecko anyway. Um, when I've ever had them, most of the time they were, at first they were too small that when Diego bit into one, he didn't even realise he'd bit into it. Then I got some bigger ones, but the problem is when they were bigger, they would... Uh, turn into black soldier flies a lot quicker which was a pain and so I only get them occasionally when I know the geckos will definitely eat them so like right now they're sort of off of their food a bit so if I got a load of calci worms they most likely turn into black soldier flies and that would be very annoying so if I do offer calci worms because they are quite small but they are quite healthy I'd probably offer 10 to 15 like I do with the mealworms I know this varies a lot as I said I haven't got tons of experience with them so if you regularly give your leopard geckos calci worms let me know below how many you usually offer um, I've never offered 
the black soldier flies to my geckos. The geckos may have had a pupa once, I'm not sure. But calcium worms are something I would like to have more of. It's just I hate that they turn into black soldier flies. Because unlike beetles, you know, they flap around, they can get out, and that would be a pain. So I hope this has helped. I know a lot of people have been asking me to do this because the last time I did a video where I talk about how many feeder insects to offer, it was quite a long time ago. And I don't think I was really using mealworms as much as I am now. Like, I can't remember. It was such a long time ago that video is quite old. So this is definitely a new updated one. As for how often you should feed your geckos, I do have a feeding and supplementing schedule. One thing I will say with that is, once again, it's just a guide. And in the supplementing schedule, I do say about using vitamins and minerals twice and using them at the weekend. To be honest, I would split them up a bit. I don't know why I said to use them both at the weekend. That is only a guide. And since making that video, I do obviously use uh, UV now and different supplements, but it, it's a guide. It tells you how often you should feed your geckos depending on their age and when to supplement-ish. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been helpful. Thank you for watching guys and goodbye.